Hello everybody. Today I'm going to teach you the Highlander menu technique. This is a very powerful technique for nested menus. If you need to have an option screen or if you have like an RPG menu where you can select party and item and save or even something like a battle menu uh, or if you've got a map and you want things to pop up when you click on other things. This is a really great technique and I'll show it to you right now. I've mocked up this map and I want to have it so that when I click on stuff other stuff pops up. A classic RPG style, clicking on things for other things menu. Now how would you normally do that? Well, normally you'd go to the button and you'd add a new event and you'd tell it to turn the palace or on or turn whatever menu you wanted to turn on, on, like so. This has a lot of downsides. I mean, it works, but I mean, look, all this stuff is open and I can't close it. I can put in close buttons, but I don't want to be rigid about it. I want it to kind of understand what the player wants to do and just automatically do the right thing. Good news, that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and create a new script, which we're going to call the Highlander menu. Boom. And we're going to go ahead and add that to each of our sub menus like this. And then we're going to edit it. So what do we want out of our Highlander menu? Well, we want to be able to know whether or not it is shown. We want to be able to show it. Show, uh, show one equals show, and we can say game object dot set active show. There we go. And we can say public void toggle for what those times when we don't care what the current state is. We just want to change it. Easy enough. Now we're going to go back into these buttons, and rather than doing game object .set active, we're going to do Highlander menu .toggle. Boom. Well, we've replaced that functionality, and we've added a little bit more, but we still have all of these menus on top of each other. Well, there's a reason this is called the Highlander menu system, because there can be only one. But we're going to be smart about this, because each of those menus might have submenus, and we don't want the submenus to close their parent menu. That would be really obnoxious. So we're going to keep track of what tier any given menu is on. And then here in Show, we're going to say, if we're trying to show the menu, then we're going to want to close down all of the other Highlander menus on the same tier or higher. How do we find a list? of all of our Highlander menus. Well, there actually are a lot of ways to do this, uh, but most of them are really obnoxious and slow, so I tend to keep track of them manually. You don't have to if you don't want to, but this is not a, not a difficult technique. Public static list Highlander menu menus equals new list Highlander menu. And down here, we're just going to add a couple of simple functions. Public void awake menus dot add this and public void on destroy menus dot remove this like so and now down here we can just walk through those for int a equals zero you could use either a four or four each whatever makes you happy let's go ahead and use a for each for each highlander menu menu in menus if menu does not equal this so we don't want to turn ourself off and menu.shown and menu.tier is greater than or equal to our tier then we say menu.show false and that will turn off any menu that is currently on when we need it to hmm all right we're starting to get somewhere now i should point out that just popping it on and off like this is pretty strict. Normally speaking, I put in an animator and I set the show bool on the animator to make it go swishy swishy. But um, this is fine for, for a demonstration. You can go ahead and implement whatever techniques you need in your version. I should say that the only thing you need to, need to do is replace this one line. So it's really very straightforward. So... Uh, what next? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the things that the Highlander menu already allows. Let's create, first off, let's go ahead and turn all of these on. What we would like to do is set up the Highlander menu so that it sets itself up. Uh, show shown. 
properly when we press play. Boom. Now the reason we did that is because it's easier to edit menus you can see. These menus are, uh, are able to be clicked on right now. I can already see how they are, what they are. If I was turning them on and off arbitrarily, it would be kind of complicated. Also, we can set it up with some defaults by changing the shown value and hitting play. And there we go, we got some defaults. Uh, but if you have a lot of menus, this can get really difficult to actually edit in scene view. Now, there's a reason that I'm in 3D mode, and a lot of you are probably like, why are you editing all this stuff in 3D mode? Well, that's because, choop, to me, menus are 3D. Now, pulling them out like this doesn't change how they are going to be rendered at all, but it lets you click on them real easy, and you can instantly see what you're aiming at. So I use this to control what I am editing and I allow myself to quickly see what tiers of menu I've got and what's going on. What else can we do? Well, let's go ahead and create a new panel. We'll just make it a button for now because buttons start smaller like this. Uh, and let's go ahead and make this button larger like so. And uh, this will be our blacksmith buy stuff menu. So over here in the back blacksmith, we just go ahead in this button here, we can add a new event, we can drag our buy stuff button in it. But you know what, we forgot to add our Highlander menu to our buy stuff. So buy stuff is a new tier, it's on tier one. And you notice I dragged it forward so that I can tell it's on a different tier. Buy stuff, Highlander menu toggle, hit play, town blacksmith, buy stuff, there it is. Button doesn't do anything, but there it is. Uh, what's nice about this? No floating menus, no leftover crap. This is on a higher tier, it just goes away. How nice. So you don't have to worry about closing down every possible menu that could be open. It just automatically does it for you. Quite nice. Obviously this button is uh, doesn't do anything at the moment, but here's a fun little toy. We can drop buy stuff into itself and tell it to turn itself off. Now this technique would be useful for like a little X button in the corner or a cancel or whatever. Boom. Now don't forget, you can add a lot of additional logic in here. So for example, if you wanted to, uh, you could keep track of what the player was about to buy. And if they closed the menu, you could add in, uh, you know, an extra bit of logic here that would call in a canceled transaction or whatever. So you can use these events in a lot of different ways. You're still going to have to write some code for that stuff, though. I just find that's super easy to hang onto this. Now, what are some other things we can do with the Highlander menu? Well, there's a lot of ways to control complexity here. I've shown you this pulling forward method. You can also create multiple canvases. Uh, and you can also do a lot of uh, prefabbing stuff. So let's go ahead and create a new canvas. And we'll just put something on it, like a button. Like this. And this will be our options screen. I'll drop a Highlander menu here. And we're going to add one little function to our Highlander menu. And that's going to be the ability to call a new function called instantiate. And this will just be game object dot instantiate game object, and uh, that should be enough. Uh, we probably also want to tell it to show itself though, because otherwise we will end up uh, having objects which hide themselves rather than show themselves. Anyway, you cut it, that should be fine. Let's go ahead and prefab this, boom, and then delete it. Over here in the options button, we're gonna tell it. To take the to take that prefab Highlander menu instantiate hit play there it is oh look it's invisible it didn't work what happened well we've got this situation where we are turning things on and off willy nilly so I think it's probably best if uh, we just set shown equals true instead. And this is what I mean by customizing. It really will, you'll have to try and figure out exactly what conditions you'd like things to show and what conditions you'd like them to hide. So you can see that what I've just done is I've created this, but we've created a lot of them. 
because uh, when we click this button, it just instantiates them. And when they get turned off, they just get turned off, but they're still in the backdrop. So we've got all of these turned off options. Now there is another technique we can use, which we will call a uh, public, oops, sorry, public bool uh, destroy on disable equals false. And down here when we instantiate it, we will say destroy on disable equals true. And then in here, we're going to go ahead and say if destroy on disable and not show game object dot dist oh, sorry destroy game object and return put this up here though so now when we click the options menu we're not going to get a giant stack of them we still have one disabled options menu object i'm not sure what's up with that but uh you can see it's a lot better than it used to be. Oh, that must have been left over for some reason. But you can see that that works. And we can pop all these things up. We can pop up the options menu. We can do whatever we need to do. We can do lots of layers. We can implement prefabs, spawn them into the screen, have them vanish and disappear. All of this stuff works great. Uh, and you don't need to worry about all of the overhead that comes from trying to make code that checks to see whether all of the other menus are open and shuffles things around and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is a super powerful technique. And I'm thinking about teaching you another technique uh, for arranging parts using transforms, uh, which is super valuable if you are trying to create a small game and you don't want to wrangle 10,000 data types. But for now, I think this will do. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you understood it. If not, let me know and I'll do it again.